Hey, hey, guys. Hey. Hey, guys. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Sure. Hold on, hold on. Wait, come over here. Get in this alley. Get in this alley. Hold on. All right, hold on. Check out check out what I got here. Do you guys like uh you guys like kung fu movies? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. All right. How about do you guys like sports movies with like family drama and shit? I'm a, I'm a fan of Field of Dreams. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, why not? All right. Do you guys like uh do you guys like uh movies with supernatural shit in them? Oh yeah. Uh, absolutely. All right. All right. Do you guys like uh movies where they cut the asshole out of a chicken and then chew the <laughs> asshole up in their mouth and then spit it onto a plate and then pass the plate down the line and the next guy sucks the the chewed up chicken ass into their mouth and chews on it and it keeps going down the line until eventually they spit the goop into a dead woman's mouth to bring her back to life. <laughs> That's really specific. <laughs> Um, but yes all right i got a movie for you it's called the boxer's omen and we watched this oh boy stampy stampy hi welcome back to another episode of stabby stabby i am one of your hosts eric uh, on this podcast, we dissect obscure horror movies, exploitation movies, and deep dive uh, into the plot so you don't have to. Oh, that's um, nice. And uh, it often runs longer than the actual film itself. So thanks for <laughs> thanks for sticking with us if you make it through a full episode. Um, today, I am just drinking some water, and I have a little side thing here of uh, peppermint bark. So I'm probably going to eat some chocolate oh. uh, mm. really close to my mic. We'll see. <laughs> so Varric sounds especially sweet today. Sweet and minty fresh. That's why. <laughs> and a little bit go. sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, as always. Uh, uh, Dan, what, what's going hey. on with you? How are hey you doing? Guys. What are you up I'm, to? I'm doing well. What I'm up to is I'm, I'm chatting with my, my bestest of buds and I'm drinking a beer. So it's a good night. I'm drinking a, a good night moon imperial milk porter from greater good brewing company i guess in massachusetts oh this is nice i don't think i've ever had a greater good uh beer before this is quite tasty it's 11 percent imperial milk porter so i'm gonna get sloppy by the time this can is done greg how are you doing today hey i'm doing good because i think i'm gonna get a little sloppy with you Let's i'm do drinking it. a uh, new trail brewing flannel weather uh hazy double ipa uh which is uh oh, nine nine percent so that's good enough. Um, so I am also very much looking forward to talking about Boxer's Omen and having you guys fill in all the details. <laughs> that's a tall this order. movie was wild. It's a lot. There's a lot going on. It might be easier to describe what doesn't happen in this movie. Actually, that would be a good place to start. You know what doesn't happen in this movie is they don't really flesh out any characters. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it's fair yeah. to say. My, yeah, my overall to... note, I think, to this movie was that, like, a traditional sports m film, as I'm used to it, will be, like, open on a sporting thing that goes poorly, training mm -hmm. montage, follow-up sporting event that goes a little bit better, follow-up training montage, a sporting event that goes terribly, and then a follow-up last-minute sport, like, training montage, and then the event goes well, and they win in the end. This movie bucks all those traditions. This movie goes in a different direction. Yeah, but I wouldn't even consider it a sport movie. Really? I guess we'll talk about that. Uh, uh, sure. Um, there's about seven minutes of boxing in The Boxer's Omen. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like it's a lot of it, just set up for the plot. Yeah, it, it's to get our main character to a specific place, and that's about it. Yeah. It's like, how um, can we but, get to a really weird <laughs> movie? Let's just start out with some boxing. <laughs> we need we need a genre that we can stuff full of montages that don't make a ton of sense but are visually compelling. All right, the sports I, sport genre done. Check. I know I want to end with fuzzy killer caterpillars. How do I get there? <laughs> How do I get there? Yeah. <laughs> no, the Stop. caterpillars are going to be vomited onto a person by a uh, succubus demon. Yep. This makes sense. Yeah, totally. Hey, if you're uh, totally lost listening to this, uh, don't worry. So are we. <laughs> but we'll 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 travel down this 
slimy, slippery hole together. <laughs> All right. It's let's very chew, goopy. Let's chew on and then spit out this plot so that we can suck it off the plate and spit it out onto the next plate and so on and so forth until we understand this movie. Let's do it. No, you're not supposed to swallow. God damn it. Oh, crap. <laughs> Start the ritual <laughs> no. all over. Oh, no. No. Now let's get to the plot. So 1983's The Boxer's Omen, directed by Chi Hung Kuei, uh, opens up uh, on the beautiful Shaw Brothers kind of opening. Uh, which I personally really love. Shaw Brothers movies are usually crazy and super fun, and this one uh, certainly lives up to that, uh, especially <laughs> the crazy aspect. Uh, we get our opening credits uh, that I mostly cannot read because I do not read anything outside of English, and we cut to a boxing match in Hong Kong. We have the Hong Kong fighter uh, winning the match, um, but the Thai boxer uh, attacks him afterwards, um, after the fight and ends up breaking his neck mm. and the uh, the Hong Kong fighter's brother who will be our main character Chan Hung um, he uh, he goes in and starts trying to beat up the the uh, Thai boxer whose name is Babo I believe he's my favorite boxing and, uh, boy Babo Babo <laughs> Babo the boxing boy <laughs> <laughs> he's great he's a tank uh, of a man he's huge yeah that dude's from uh, I think is I don't know how to pronounce his name is Bolo Young uh, his nickname is the Beast from the East, but uh, I recognize him from um, Bloodsport with Claude Van Damme. Oh, nice, uh, nice! I was like, I know that guy. He's in Enter the Dragon too. But Blood damn, Sport I love Bloodsport. I, I didn't recognize yeah. him. Yeah, yeah he he is he is built interestingly. He is a wide man. Yeah, he's a brick wall. <laughs> he he's like as big uh, as a man who is wearing the shoulders of another man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's a double wide also yeah, he's like a mascot yeah they the opening of the movie happened and like he had he had the the what was it the high the thai boxer attacks the hong kong boxer right after they won yeah. and like breaks his neck and my mm. wife walked through the room just as it happened she was like oh what happened and i was like oh it's million dollar baby it just, this movie opened with million dollar baby <laughs> it's a, it's oh, a pretty look, hardcore he, way to open a boxing movie <laughs> It yeah, you didn't know attention. Million Dollar Baby was a remake of Boxer's Omen. <laughs> yeah, they just so. focused on the wrong fucking part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine a Clint Eastwood movie full of, like, animal sacrifice and, like, Buddhist rituals cranked to 11? I would love to uh, watch that shit. Oh, uh, that'd be great. Get off my <laughs> yard, off my lawn, and, and into my cut, prayer pot. <laughs> cut open this crocodile and stuff this mummy inside <laughs> and he'd just be complaining that like you're not doing it the way i was taught to do it and he'd just be being reactionary but for like weird ritualistic things <laughs> kids these days just want to chop up turkeys we used to chop up chickens this is ridiculous <laughs> that's what that's what clint eastwood sounds like in my head and he's saying all that to an empty chair mind you yeah <laughs> yeah and, and you'll see this live um on the screen for a million dollar baby zoomin coming up next year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on, we got our we got our main character's brother has a broken neck. Uh, later that night or next day, uh, time means nothing in this movie. <laughs> yeah, time um, doesn't make sense. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, our our main character Chan Hung goes to see his uncle, uh, who I believe is the head of a mob. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. like a gangster. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So he's a criminal grandfather. Here. I think that's the catch all, all right. thing that I would call him. He's a criminal right, well, you're grandfather. Gonna, hopefully, one of you can fill me in here because I don't know what happened. He, the uncle sends him on some sort of mission, meeting some mainlanders. Um, so he goes by himself. Uh, he gets ambushed and he's hung up uh, by his feet to get tortured. They're dunking him in a bucket of water. Uh, and then a magical monk appears who kills everyone and uh, cuts the like magically cuts the rope that Chan Hung is being uh, hanged from. And uh, the monk tells him to follow him. But uh, Chan Hung runs the other way because it's a magical monk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that happened. But like, I don't know why he was there in the first place. Like, um, 
I think it, like he, he, my read of it, he was like an angry young man whose brother was just done dirty and he, he needs to get resources to train to be able to fight in his brother's place because he wants to get revenge hasn't even or something like yet, that though he, we, he does not set to get revenge yet right this is after that fight happens right it's after the fight but it's before his brother tells him to get revenge for him i the yeah, way i read it was that the movie was setting him up to be like like he's a problematic guy that has like he's surrounded by bad people who want bad things for him and then he has this like religious experience that sends him towards like buddhism and and trying to yeah. like find a better path for himself yeah, that's kind of how i read right. the scene yeah yeah okay. the uncle is chopped up in a bag also yeah, oh, yes, <laughs> yes, the, yes. Yeah. also that yes that. I, I like that the, uh, uh, the buddhist monk is all gold but he's also like spraying water outside of his yeah. bag it's like pretty great yeah yeah but you know, why, you know why he runs the other way well he's got somebody waiting for him at home that's, That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Because after escaping death through a magical monk, uh, Chan goes back to his apartment uh, where he basically immediately bangs his girlfriend. Oh, not immediately. He was sitting on the couch, but he bangs his girlfriend um, pretty graphically against the window of their apartment. Um, I think the, the scene is like set up where he's just like watching her brush her hair or something like that. She's doing something perfectly innocent. And uh, she's leaning forward at just the right way where you can like see between the buttons of her blouse and you can see a little bit, a little bit of nip. And he just like <laughs> attacks her and she doesn't seem to be wanting any part of it, really. She seems to be uh, a, a passive participant. For, well, for about the first like three seconds. That's true. Uh, but then she does seem to be uh, fine with it. Yeah, uh, you're totally right. A couple of honks but, and she's hey. on board the party bus. <laughs> <laughs> Did oh, you? Man. uh did your version have the Sir Mix a Lot song put him on the glass? Because <laughs> <laughs> mine did. No, I think you had a the American edit. Okay. No, we, right. my, yeah. my neighbor was moving out on the day that I watched this, and I had my windows open, and this whole sex scene was playing out while like four or five moving guys are moving around in front of my house. <laughs> and f- like full on, I know that at least two of them like stopped to look at the TV through my window. Of course so, they did. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, that's, I, that's I know I, I practically like waved them on like, yeah, I'm watching this too. Come watch this with me. <laughs> I, I do think this scene does get the stabby stabby seal of approval, <laughs> at least from me. That was a pretty good scene. Greg is an come. easy man to please. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Come, come for the nudity and stay for the puke eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, definitely stay for that. I do want to ask you guys what your favorite ritual is, but I guess we'll get there. Um. Yeah, man, we, maybe we can bring that up at the end when uh when we uh tell everybody to give us five stars let's just do that right at the beginning give us five stars watch this movie what's your favorite ritual <laughs> what's yours <laughs> what ritual would you invent for us to perform it, it patreon we could perform one of the rituals a black magic ritual oh, that's there true you go. well we will bless you by i guess eating like gummy worms in a graphic way or something Ooh. And spit it out and making Eric eat it all. I was trying to avoid Whoa. promising people that we would eat spit out food. I don't. I'm yeah. gonna. I'm yeah. gonna draw yeah, the wanna... line at ABC food. Thank you very much. I don't want to do that. Hmm. We'll see. Um, all right. So he's banged his girlfriend. <laughs> they go to sleep, and he wakes up uh, in the middle of the night to a l- like a bright light s- symbol flying around his house. Wow. Uh, this symbol ends up going into the TV room. And uh, it's the that's it's where, the monk from earlier. It's where, the magic monk. Usually, when I follow quest markers through my house, it leads me to the TV as well. Yeah, that's usually yeah. how it goes. Oh, this is what yeah. I've always wanted. Thank you, quest. <laughs> I found it. I was I was gonna be here anyway. The princess was in my castle all along. It's my pl- it's my Panasonic plasma. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an upside down V kind of yeah. looking thing. Yeah, yeah, but the, it, the room it, was yeah. cool. Like. The TV room with the static like pulsing and the monk was see through. It was pretty neat. Yeah, and there was like a it was it was the whatever that's got to be like a trope in lighting where they need to make a room seem ominous, uh, ominous, ominous. So they have like a <laughs> a big industrial fan with a light behind it, <laughs> just a fan spinning. Yeah, it's good. It's set yeah. the stage. Yeah. It definitely works. There's a lot um, of practical stuff in here that uh, is really cool. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I mean, this in the is movie? 83. This feels a little ahead of its time, like some of the effects, for real. Uh, I agree. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, but yeah, so we have uh, the monk uh, once again telling him to uh, to come with him. And uh, Chan uh, is interrupted by his girlfriend and Who taken back came with. to bed. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> All right, that's, that's my joke. I don't, to, I don't know how to continue with that. I'm so sorry. I loved it. Dan made a jizz joke. I made a jizz Wait. joke. All right. <laughs> we can tie that off. Move on. All right. It was um, a happy ending to that segment. All right. So next day or so, Chan uh, is at the hospital. He learns that his brother will be permanently paralyzed. And his brother tells him that he wants him to get revenge for him by beating the Thai boxer. I don't necessarily know if he wants him to kill him or not, but uh, he wants him to win the fight. Mm -hmm. Um, So Chan ends up going to Thailand to challenge Babo, the beast from the east, uh, to a match. (laughs) And they, they set the date. For three months from now, um, later oh, they establish the date that early because later in the movie there's a scene where he's like, "Oh, I've been away for three months," and it blew my fucking mind that what happens in this movie it takes place in three months. Three months, yeah. Most of it takes place in about a day and a half. Jesus Christ! <laughs> but I go to the uh, grocery store and I'm like, "That's enough activity for one day." Thank you. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go sit in my silence chamber, not move. I like that the Thai boxer was courteous enough to give him like three months to like build up to the match. <laughs> you know, like we could do it tomorrow, but why don't you get in shape, practice a little bit, and then come back and see me in three months? Well, I think technically uh, he had just been in a like a big fight. So yeah. if you're fight if you're doing big fights every week, one, you're gonna your body's gonna wear down, and That's two, you're true. not gonna make as much money because you'll see it like people can see it so often. Well, All I, right, right. I'm, Way to I be like sensible Eric's about take. It. I, I like Eric's take. I like the idea that this guy's he is n- he's sportsmanly a enough. Gentleman. He's sportsmanly enough to be like, you need three months to train to face me and have it be a fair fight. But he will punch the spine out of your neck when you're not looking if he's grumpy <laughs> about a match. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Oh, Bobo. He'll bow deeply, he'll shake your hand, and he'll knock the discs out of your spine. (laughs) True gentleman. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Take him home to your mom. He's a sweetheart. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Your mom who pukes caterpillars later in the movie. Yeah. I would like to see, Uh, like, a Bobo at, like, Thanksgiving dinner at, like, your house (laughs) with his shirt off. Just Just punching the turkey. Yeah, just... (laughs) Punching things. <laughs> That's how he carves it. He just pulverizes it, and they all have to walk around the house picking up bits. Punching sides. Give me the mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> now they're smashed potatoes. <laughs> damn it, Baba. God damn it. Not Wrong again. Oh. I'll call you know, this cranberry sauce. And just shoves his <laughs> fist in it. <laughs> Just cuts to him on like an arrow bed. It's all deflated because he's giant. He's just <laughs> and then because he kept sad. punching it. <laughs> Sweet potatoes, more like beet potatoes. This is so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> oh man. So uh, later, after uh, the match is set, uh, Chan Hung ends up at a Buddhist temple, and the Buddhist temple's like roof is shaped like that glowing symbol from earlier and it's also glowing at him it's it's beckoning him um the abbot of the temple uh knows all about him already um he tells him that he knows his name everything that he's been up to that he would be here uh he goes into a story about another abbot uh ching zhao Mm uh he talks about him going to this is a long part just let me roll with it and you can fill it (laughs) i'm gonna interrupt you halfway but you're fine same. All right, cool. All right, so he goes to Hong Kong uh, <laughs> to kill a uh, a black magic practitioner um, who, a <laughs> who turns. Yeah, well, because they <laughs> he's uh, doctor just, black magic. <laughs> he practices black magic. <laughs> if if I say black magician, it doesn't get the same point you're across. Totally like, right. that's oh, like, you're totally I right. right. I see. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so uh, he he turns he turns into a bat. After his skin melts off and after he turns into an old lady as well, mm-hmm. um, the abbot, uh, the, the, uh, Ching Zhao, 
uh, he he <laughs> he catches the bat and i guess he takes it back to the temple and he's doing some sort of prayer over the bat which ends up melting the bat's body into just a little tiny cute bat skeleton <laughs> it is cute um we're also introduced to who, who's like the big bad of the movie who is another black magic practitioner <laughs> A, a, a bad magic boy he's like an evil demon um, kind of a guy yeah mm-hmm. i think he, i think he's a person I think that because yeah. they show him in like kind of an alternate reality i thought well i th- yeah so that i have a, that'll come up later okay. i have a question about that yeah okay. um Apparently so he, I do he's, he's 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 a he's a black uh, magic uh master and he, he brings back the skeleton uh the skeleton bat uh back to life but the uh the monk uh, is able to uh, catch the bat as it's slowly waddling <laughs> down <laughs> the carpet. Uh, he smashes it with like a hammer. Um, it really and, was and like this is... watching Gumby get destroyed. Oh, that, yeah. that bat yeah. was adorable. I love that little thing. I was Dude. rooting for him. I'm like, you can yeah. make it. You can make it to that door. <laughs> yeah, he seemed like confused. He's like, he, he was really happy when he was brought back to life. He was like yeah. looking around. Yeah, I want little, to live. His little yeah, mouth was going. Is, so good yeah, was- um so yeah th- this is where my my question comes in so like this seems to take place on like multiple planes of reality right yeah. like because the, the 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 black magic guy is not there um but he's he's controlling i think the other the other magician right yeah yeah but there like, is no other magic uh, the, the original the bat yeah 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 (laughs) yes yes but like he's he's hitting bones to make it like move faster and things like that like it looks like he's right there with the bat but he's not at the temple no you know what i mean so like yeah he's in a different location right yep yeah Yeah, it's it's a flashback (laughs) as well it's a flashback to show the origin yes right Yeah. yeah My my read um, on the scene was the original magician did a ritual that summoned help from like the bat demon thing, um, but then he like killed the resulting bat, and then the guy that was summoned wanted revenge for that bat getting killed. It was it was a little confusing. I was a little confused by this. What I got well, out of it, the important part was that the big bad guys introduced and that he's like controlling shit by doing he does like seemingly completely disconnected things that somehow affect it'd be like the modern equivalent to like if i was like oh you're gonna give me a flat tire well and then i'll like chew on raw spaghetti and then you grow hair so long you can't see like it'll be that kind of a thing yeah um and that that's pretty much coming up too so i'll I'll describe some more Uh, in a little bit more detail, Sorry, but yeah, you, we're, Eric, we're, we're Eric's got something Eric. to say there. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're right. Yeah, I, I think, and I don't want to jump too far ahead, but it's there's different magicians that represent like different animals. Like one's a lizard, <laughs> one's a like you know, one's a rat or something like that. And this guy's yeah. the bat, the bat obviously, but he is in like a Batman costume, like he has a bat head, and he flies at one point, uh, and his cape's like fluttering. It's really cool, and then. Um, when he bring when he revives that skeleton, the bat skeleton, he spits rat blood directly into the camera. It's pretty, pretty <laughs> yeah. awesome. It's great. He cuts open uh. a rat, sucks the blood out, spits it. Yeah, it's great. Um, oh, if you love animals, don't watch this movie. <clears throat> I don't think they kill any real animals. Well, they definitely the kill at least one animal on screen, and I assumed the rat was another one. Mm. Actually, they kill two animals on screen in this one. Yeah. I don't think the crocodile's real. No, two chickens. Yeah, I think it's the chickens. Yeah, yeah I think the rats are fake. They're okay. all, like, kind of fuzzy looking. Yeah, hey. and and we got, we got a cool animal coming up because we... Uh, we now now our um evil evil magician is uh playing some sweet smooth jazz music from oh, his yeah. flute or something <laughs> i don't know instruments um that he he's able to summon uh snakes with they all come out of his mystery jars it's like that a, he has lining the walls yeah like snake charmer no i know but i've never heard that music for snake charming 
So what was the music? It was it sounded like smooth jazz. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, it was Yankee Doodle where all the snakes <laughs> came crawling up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he he takes their venom. He he makes them ooze their venom into a cup, which he then mixes with human brains from a rotting skull that he pulls out of another jar. Then he takes <laughs> that mush that he has made through the venom and the rotting brains and feeds it to a bunch of uh, like three evil spiders who yeah. are also adorable who have little straws that suck up all the brain goop <laughs> yeah it's adorable yeah, they are cute too it's so fun yeah. i love the witch doctor demon I oh he's him. great yeah, yeah. The head, um, the head from the jar is pretty gnarly looking. That looks pretty it's, good. It's gross, it was unsettling. Yeah. If it wasn't for the cartoony eyes, the effect of like the, the, the he he doesn't just mix brain and venom. He like pours venom into an open skull that already has a brain in it. So he's like pouring the venom over a brain and then just gets a wooden spoon and pulverizes <laughs> the brain and mixes it until it's mush. Yeah, he, like, that's he awesome. It yeah. as a bowl. Remember those WWJD bracelets? I want one that's what would the witch doctor do? WWWDDD. <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> Somebody cuts me off in traffic. You know what I think? WWWDDD. I'd, I'd mix his brain with some venom and feed it to little straw spiders. Yeah, those those spiders drinking are, is fantastic. We should do yeah. a little bit of that. It, just the, the bat walk in and those little spiders. This is when I was like, all right, they had like a pretty pretty graphic sex scene earlier but this movie's fucking cute <laughs> <laughs> it is it's like something from a kid's movie <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah so uh, he takes the newly uh v- v- venom brain spiders <laughs> to the temple that the <laughs> abbot is at and he he climbs up to the top of the like ceiling sends the spiders down and they stab abbot ching zhao in the eyes and mm. kill him and I did mean that as a question <laughs> because we get a lot with Ching Zhao in this movie, even though he died in a flashback. Yeah, so he um, he was about to enter into like whatever immortality. Nirvana or bliss, yeah. like or immortality, and he get, he was interrupted with these with these <laughs> bad boys. Yeah, so the, the poison stopped uh, him from achieving immortality, um, but oh, I, as he was like. Sorry, just just a throwaway thing. This is the second movie we've watched that had a poisoning happen while people were sleeping and dripping the poison into their mouths while they're yeah. asleep. The other one was yeah. malformed men. Or is malformed same men? Note, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It seems huh. like it's a little it's a little trope, a little a little trope going on. There's a cool like him crawling on the ceiling is kind of cool too. Yeah, it is. It's creepy. And I, again, I I think I said the same thing. The malformed men thing. The idea of like in this instance, he was alone, I think, when he was sleeping. But the idea of like waking up to find that your spouse had poison dribbled in their mouth while they were asleep is fucking terrifying. What a terrible way to go. And he had a boner. I mean, obviously, <laughs> wouldn't you fear boner? Of course. Uh, I, think was, I think it was early in the morning. <laughs> the sun was about to come up. The demon just hangs uh, out in the corner and looks. <laughs> <laughs> I came here for the killing, but I'm gonna stick around. He's, he's I, I, I would leave a room, but he's still pointing at me. It's just full of stupid jokes. I watched that movie. <laughs> da, 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 da. What's going on at the witch doctor's? <laughs> hey, you kids want to come over and chew on a chicken with me? <laughs> <laughs> chew on a chicken. Hey. <laughs> oh boy! Help me harvest my worms from my worm farm, and we'll go poison uh. some broads. This movie's so weird. No, I mean, <laughs> what I'm saying is not that far off. That's no, fine. it's not. No. Um, all right. So um, the the new current abbot of the temple uh, tells him that uh, Ching Zhao had prophesied that Chan Hung would come and help break the spell um, that is stopping Zing uh, Ching Zhao from achieving immortality. So Ching Zhao's remains were put in an urn, and if Chan Hung came within three months, they should open that urn. And if his body is still intact, uh, he would show Chan a sign of or something. So they end up breaking the urn. We see the body, and it's I would say decently intact for for being in there for what like a month. I mean, I'd kill um, to have a body like that. 
Well, yeah. Well, he is all ribcage. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> he kind of um, looks like he's made out of liverwurst. <laughs> yeah yeah i can see that like um, you say he's, you he's made out of ribcage you mean literally he has like 40 ribs that go down the entire length of his body <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that he's boy's got, got a lot of ribs yeah, he's got some extras in there yeah um but yeah so so all the other monks leave that area and uh lock chan in and uh the body starts talking to him um and Chan learns that he is Ching Zhao's twin brother from another life. And because of that, for some reason, if Ching Zhao dies, Chan Hung dies as well. And uh, Chan uh, didn't it didn't really sit well with him. So he, he quickly leaves. Uh, he goes back to like his hotel in Thailand and then books a flight to get out of there. And um, one but- random scene that's shot in English for no reason. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but <laughs> later trailer. that night, <laughs> yeah, it's the sell it in America. <laughs> yep. There's one scene, um, and then uh, later that night, uh, he he is he is in pain in bed, and he goes to the bathroom to throw up, and he ends up vomiting up what I believe to be an eel, a full size eel. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which he throws it up into the sink, and then it jumps into the toilet and uh, gets flushed away. <laughs> that eel was one of my favorite. Another one of my favorite things in this Dude, movie. Dude, it was fucking awesome. That's and it was so yeah. out of nowhere, and it was legit, <laughs> fucking terrifying. Super well shot. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, great. What uh, was that? It was like an eel. It was totally it, an eel. No, no, no yeah. I know, but what it what for what reason? Like what? Why did he puke the eel? Uh, I think it was Ching Zhao, like Showing fucking his, with him. Yeah, <laughs> like basically, like, like trying to fort. Like, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay. You're like we're twins in past life. I'm going to show you my power by making you puke and eel. I mean, that's what I would do. Yeah, Makes that's exactly sense. what I would do. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Well, wait, it's a, wait yeah, how would yeah, it's, how, it's certainly would, one way of going about it? How but. would you get your multi life separated twin to pay attention to you after you died? You have to reveal that you had matching. Um, birthmarks on the on your butt <laughs> on the bottom of your foot and it's it's shaped like a swastika. <laughs> yeah, You're talking about malformed uh, men again. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. We have to put their butts together like Tenacious D. Yeah, maybe that's where I was thinking it. Mm. Man, you know, there's another. That's another thing in this movie. So we had poisonings from the roof. Now we have this like separated twin or twinning or doubles going on again. Twinning. Hey, yeah. Hashtag blessed. I think I I would probably do something similar. I would probably have him regurgitate something. I don't know if it would be an eel or it, it would be kind of cool to have somebody regurgitate like a like an like a food store membership card, and then mm. when they go to the food store and they scan it out of, and like in sheer terror they realize that it works, and then they could like go to the customer service counter and be like, "What are the historical purchases on this card?" And the person's like, "It's just beans," and then they. <laughs> <laughs> what if, they just have diarrhea for months after that what if you made them vomit up um like alphabet pasta but just enough letters to say like for them to be able to figure out how to spell like <laughs> trust me i'm your brother i made you vomit up this Ooh, alphabet soup i like that <laughs> but Wait. they'd have to put that they'd have to put that riddle together <laughs> <laughs> I like that you're powerful enough to <laughs> make them vomit up alphabet soup, but they've got to put in the last like yeah. couple feet of effort. It's just like 40 <laughs> minutes of him doing a word puzzle. <laughs> I know I could figure this out. According to the, I, I think I vomited the priest's dog sick and a bunch of consonants. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. There's all these different spinoff movies. It's a multiverse of different possibilities I think I'd have puke him, rated r i think i'd have him vomit up like a little tiny man <laughs> <laughs> he just like puts him in his pocket and just talks to him the rest of the movie yeah it's 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 the exposition man wait are yeah. you saying he just kind of tells him what he needs to do 
<laughs> oh, I was trying to think through like in my head, it, the first thing that came out of my brain was that a, a man, like a fully grown, like 45 year old man in a suit jacket falls out of your mouth and immediately stands up, turns around and starts calling you dad. <laughs> and then you have to take care of this <laughs> grown up, tiny baby sized adult man that as works. your as your child. I love that idea. <laughs> yeah. You, you give him an 18 year chore. Yeah. For timeout, you just put hmm. him in a really big bowl that he can't get out of. <laughs> Does he never grow? <laughs> no, he's permanently a tiny man. He's like a teacup person. Yeah. I love I love everything about this. Yeah. <laughs> you could give him tiny <laughs> chores. Mm-hmm. Yeah, polish the silverware. It'll take you all day. All right. Well, you know, um, if you like what you've heard so far, please give us five stars <laughs> no. and uh, t- tell us how That's... you would, what you would make somebody vomit up to make them know that you were their twin from another life. <laughs> oh yeah, I kind of yeah. lost that. That, that I correct. guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not vomiting for fun. It's got to have a reason. I mean, the, the eel didn't really have a reason besides like scaring him. I think. Uh, no, that's a good yeah. point. That's a good point. Also, I just want um, to point out. This is just the first 30 minutes of this movie. Yeah. Yep. It's insane. This yeah, it's just the first 30. So. Yeah. I I'll, yeah. I, it, I was perpetually confused while watching this movie, but also by the time the movie was done, I felt like I understood what happened and I will give the movie credit that that is a fine line to walk. <laughs> but they mm-hmm. they do manage to walk it. I have no idea what I'm looking at sometimes, but it does kind of all make sense by the end. Asterix, oh, asterix, question mark? It, maybe, yeah. All right, we'll see. Um, I think it makes sense in its own context, right? So, so anyway, uh, he vomits okay. out an eel, not an Acme <laughs> yeah. food cart, and not a not a tiny man in a suit jacket. <laughs> yeah. And not and, a uh, Times this... crossword in alphabet soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so after vomiting up the eel, uh, I believe that scares him enough that he goes back to the temple the next day, and he commits to becoming a monk to defeat evil. Um, we get some scenes of him in monk training. Now, this is about a 15-minute scene, I think. Yep. Um, and, and it involves uh, him meditating in a river uh, full of leeches, Oh, that he's scene like, was hard to watch. Oh my god! Yeah, Ugh. yeah. Just, um, just that one moment. That one moment. They have him like crouched down in like murky water, and you just start seeing him reacting in pain because he's being bitten. And they're like, "No, you have to stay still." And he just yeah. grins and takes it. And when he pulls his ass out of the water, he's just covered in leeches. Ugh. I like that the dude's like slapping him with a stick the whole time. Like it's not <laughs> bad enough. <laughs> Uh, we also have him like inside a big jar, which oh, he's attached oh, to ropes yeah. with all the other monks, and they give him their power, their red light hand power that goes up the ropes and and goes into him, and he kind of like on the inside of the jar is written all this like, um, it's like Buddhist writing oh, or something. Yeah, mm. that that yeah, and he kind of absorbs all that, and then he like explodes the jar to get out. Um, so yeah, he's he's learning to be a super monk. <laughs> I think, dude, that I jar that. ritual um, was so, yeah. Sorry, Eric, go ahead. Someone needs to talk about this jar scene. Oh uh, no, yeah, I was gonna say, I, I, yeah, I loved it. I think the room was beautiful just to begin with before anything even happened it was like this cool yeah. oval uh room um but yeah the light energy like traveling up the ropes and then the text started uh rotating inside the jar yeah. and then like transferred onto his body and then it, there was all the smoke it, it was like the urn almost looked like an egg like it was like a rebirth scene or something like where he just became a total badass i freaking love that scene though. the music was fantastic it was really cool i was floored by it too and like he's like the the setting that they filmed it in both the room, the room that they're in but also the jar that he's inside of it fucking top notch top notch top notch amazing scene objectively awesome badass yeah scene. yeah Um, 
Yeah, yeah so after he's uh, now trained to be King Monk, um, we, we also learned that as a monk, he can't kill, gamble, drink, or have sex. Um, Uh-oh. So re- remember that. Mm-hmm. For the rest of his um, life? For the rest of his monk Oh, okay, that's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, I think when you become a monk, you're just you're just supposed to be a monk forever. My impression in this, well, I guess we'll get there later on when they have another little revelation. It, my impression of this is he just needs to stay virtuous until he wins his fight. And then he doesn't need the powers anymore. Uh, yeah. That's possible. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the movie tells us enough. He, I think so maybe that's the yeah. impression I get because yeah I think yeah, you're right I don't want to spoil yeah. anything but yeah, yeah. Well, that, right. well we don't want to spoil anything but there's definitely one more gratuitous sex scene that we have not talked about so we'll, yeah. we'll get there um all right yeah so so he's now super monk and basically immediately he has uh his his kind of confrontation with um the demon bat man magician man Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and uh i'm gonna just describe this as quickly as possible and we can dig real into it but uh it's a pretty wild scene uh it's full of uh evil bats uh reanimated uh crocodile skulls like just the skulls (laughs) um we get some sort of (laughs) some sort of flying goo baby monster head Mm -hmm. that sucks it's fire yeah, um, yeah that's right and and we, we we even get the uh the, the the demon magician's own uh detachable head coming out uh very much like mystics in bali um and but, but this head. one detachable this one can choke head. you <laughs> this one can choke you with its like entrails, entrails yeah <laughs> hanging off yeah. um but chan hung is able to uh to fight back and he kills the uh the demon magician uh because the sun came out and i guess he is a vampire possibly and he melts and uh he successfully broke the evil spell um that was holding uh uh ching zhao and uh he chan hong can now go just go back to hong kong um, where he he immediately bangs his girlfriend in a shower <laughs> that that's the so this is right after he goes through this long like you said like 15 minute long montage of training and i thought because it is a transformation like he, he is like a ripped dude by the end of it and he did not start like a super ripped dude so it was a transformation and also like that the monk rope power transmission seemed like the way that was edited <laughs> felt like it took a long time to do so when he goes back to bang his girlfriend and she's like, oh, you want to get in bed so soon? And he was like, I haven't had sex in three months. It like blew my brain out of my head that it had only been three months. I couldn't believe it had only been three months. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he did a whole lot. If you told me to sit my fat ass down in a jar for three months and I would come out like a rip chiseled Buddhist demigod, I would do that shit in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take take summer. Take it. You can have my summer. <laughs> Make me a god, please. <laughs> Dude, that, oh man if, yeah if, man, if we, if we if, i want to talk about that fight scene please yeah yeah he eats intestines right yes he does get like his full power at one point mm-hmm. then he <laughs> vomits it up and then he eats it again yeah what was that baby mod that green <laughs> i don't know what that monster? was <laughs> and it was like screeching and it had like crazy laser noises <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird also kind of cute all the monsters like the non-human monsters are cute as hell yeah, they're cute as fuck <laughs> they're awesome and the batman had like wrestling makeup on like underneath yeah, he, this mask which I, yeah. is that what you're talking about by like it had mystics of bali vibes because of the like face paint and all that stuff no it, it was just the head coming off and flying around oh, gotcha. on its own but um, he he kind of looked he looked like a cross between like the ultimate warrior and a clown. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, well done. My the, my biggest thought through this whole scene is like this big 
like Buddhism fight between these these two people. Like, I guess count. I don't I, I guess we'll we'll just we've said this disclaimer many times before. We uh, we respect all cultures and backgrounds and religions where we I have I have no idea what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to say I was baffled by this Buddhism power fight. <laughs> I don't know. Or is the guy with dark magic using like dark Buddhism? I don't know. I, I don't understand how it works, but I loved watching it. I thought it was super fun as fuck. I love this fight scene. This is a lot of fun. The thing that kept coming into my mind, I, I said all this stuff about Buddhism because uh, I kept thinking about how shitty, like, what in the West, where they have, like, Christian movies? What's the supernatural ability that you flex there? Like, we, I, I've never seen a Christian movie where they, like, literally consume the flesh of Christ and then vomit it and eat it again in order to, like, summon a Christian zombie. Just saying, they, they're cooler myths to work with. Yeah, I don't I don't know what the origin is of like the black magic. I'm assuming it's just something entirely separate from anything else, you know, and they just kept like ramping it up. Like, what's the next craziest thing we could do? Yeah, It'd be interesting to see if it was any of it's like rooted in real well, like black uh, magic uh, mysticism and stuff. Yeah. But it seems to be just like eating things, bloodletting things, birth other things. And it just is like raising other like animals from the dead. Uh, it's like a mishmash of just a bunch of different shit. It's really cool. I was just assuming that like, if I was to make a Western movie like this, it, I would literally go batshit crazy and show actually somebody cannibalizing the corpse of Christ himself. Like that's how hard crank to 11 this movie gets. So I was just sitting here wondering, like, man, I want to know what myths they're cranking to 11 to get some mm. of this imagery, because I think the imagery is cool as fuck. It's really like the the crocodile, alligator, whatever skulls that birth bats, but then have a second life as flamethrowers. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> That's badass. That That is a cool fucking creature to send somebody to bed like, oh, if you don't go to bed, the crocodile skulls flamethrowers are going to come out and get you <laughs> i clean my room so fast i i love that um to defeat the crocodile skulls um chan like destroys one and it turns into like just a pile of guts and they all just run away <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. they're just like fuck this he also like wedged a bunch of like uh candlesticks into their mouths at one point too yeah. yeah, pretty pretty easy way to <laughs> yeah. The, your most advanced magical technology is stopped with a candlestick. Congratulations, <laughs> you played yourself. <laughs> um, a poor chicken yeah, and the, died for no reason. Uh, poor chickens. Oh yeah, they, they behead a chicken on camera at the start of this fight scene. That's right. We should yeah. probably mention that. Yeah, and he like spreads the blood all over the skulls. And smashes its body around. Yeah, if you, if you, I, I found some of those sequences pretty hard to watch. The, the, it, it does yeah. happen quickly though. Like they don't linger on it per se. It's not like, yeah, it, it's still not, not acceptable. Don't kill chickens on just for movies. Don't murder animals um, on camera, please. Do it in yeah. secret. <laughs> the way also, God yeah, intended. In the, in, in the woods in your pentagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Also, don't stick sewing needles in both sides of your neck because your head will separate and <laughs> float, and then your insides will become tentacles. So you don't want that to happen. Bad I mean, unless image. you do want that to happen, because that will happen, but make sure it's not almost dawn because you're going to get <laughs> melted. That's true. If you're going to do it. Start at like 11 o'clock. <laughs> you have some common sense, <laughs> for Christ's sake. Oh, boy. For Buddha's sake. Um, all right. So anything else you want to talk about that? I mean, that was a great scene. Um, then we, it ends immediately with a shower sex scene, which is also just as good. Oh, um, I guess the, the only other, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, also, he's wearing his underwear in the shower. Just that. Yes, he is. <laughs> his leopard That's, print thong. Yeah. Yeah. I like how his, his girlfriend's like, uh, you must have slept with a lot of girls in Thailand. Don't give me any STDs or I'll castrate you. <laughs> that's pillow talk yeah. eric <laughs> yeah i think she was just busting his balls and he was like oh you i'm gonna get in the shower but he you. absolutely the, the the post credit sequence confirms that she does have vd now so that's how that goes yeah it's kind of a downer mm. yeah Dude, what i was thinking through a lot of these animal sacrifice movies was like the manager of the local pet smart was really confused like you need you need more baby crocodiles you want me to order more chickens <laughs> 
I, I want to know what store is supplying all these animal sacrifice bits. They're just getting them. They're just getting them like the dogs that they got for alligator. Yeah, yeah. That actually, yeah, that makes sense. That, that, yeah. Some local vet the, is on uh, the end. Yeah. The monk STDs is just like text written on your private parts about <laughs> late lasers that glow red. <laughs> hmm. That's a, that's a all right one to have, I think. It's a sec- sexually transmitted theologies. It's a <laughs> oh yeah. You got to read the writing on the wall. The old STT. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. So now uh, Chan Hong is back in Hong Kong and uh, back somewhere else. The the demon magician's body is burned and we meet who I thought were like his three acolytes. But it sounded like, Eric, you thought. No, no, I think you're right. They all. Okay. Yeah, I think you're right, but they they do. It seems like they represent different animals, though. Like one's a okay. lizard, one's a rat. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Um. So those three guys end up pulling a body, in a like a body bag out of a bog or something. Nice. Um. They they kill a crocodile after we cut it open. After we watch two crocodiles fuck, for like two minutes. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So I was. You were to skip past kinda, that. <laughs> I just wanted to call it out. <laughs> I wasn't going to skip past it so much as I with the second time I watched it and I was like, is that an alligator's fuck? Yeah, I think <laughs> it is. Or they just lay it on top of each other? No, I think this just got a guaranteed 10 out of 10 from Greg. <laughs> well, we got that sweet, sweet gator love. <laughs> yep, yeah, that, that'll do it. He's a Florida fan. Um, so they, they kill the crocodile, they cut it open, and they sew the body up inside of it. Um, now, uh, this this happens a little bit later, but I'm just kind of going to finish up this scene of these three um so eventually out of that uh, out of, <laughs> so <eventually, Keep> try it <laughs> yep. we'll get there so so eventually out of the crocodile they'll cut uh the body back out and it's going to turn into um an attractive naked zombie woman who has long spikes on her fingers uh but this does come after a scene that feels like 17 hours of three men (laughs) chewing different food spitting it on a plate passing the plate having the next person eat the chewed up food spit that chewed double chewed up food out for the next person to eat one of which is just a raw chicken butt that they cut off on screen. There's no, there's no cut. They just see, like, yeah, they cut the butt it's off. insane. Yeah. Um, can, they, can you they just they clarify what just, you mean by chicken butt? And they cut that butt off. Can you just walk us. I just want us to all, you guys, you got, Greg, Eric, me, listener. I just want us all to sit in this moment together. Eric, could you explain what you mean by they cut off that chicken's butt? <sighs> Uh, I don't know much about chicken butts, um, <laughs> except, uh, hey, but guys, I don't, except, I uh, love you. hey guys, guess what? Yeah. Guess what? Chicken, chicken butt. What? Chicken butt. Yeah, yeah. Chicken butt. Uh, that's, that's all I know about chicken butts. Yeah. I, I guess it, they flipped it over. I thought they were going to like pop an egg out or something, but instead there was like this flappy, bumpy white piece of flesh that I'm assuming is the chicken butt. That maybe Could it be the cloaca. Cloaca. Is, is it what covers like where the egg comes out to keep it warm or something? You're I don't know about anything the, about you're, you're talking about the whole of the butt. Whatever it is, it's uh-huh. a lumpy flesh thing on the underside of the chicken, and they <laughs> cut it off on screen. It's it's disgusting. And chew it into a paste and spit it out and pass it down the line for someone else to eat. And when they and spit this freaking gross when they spit the shit out onto a plate they make a point of keeping the plate in the shot so that they are spitting it onto the plate and then handing the plate which again it never cuts they take the plate in camera move it to the next guy and then he still in camera slurps it off the plate and keeps chewing Oof. and the one guy eats like a plantain or something or like a banana peel too. uh-huh yeah, not, yeah. As, not as gross as a chicken butt. But, no. Well, it's you know. so gross, but it's funny because he he takes the banana, peels it, and it's it's very much a comedy shot where he takes the banana out and just throws it towards the camera <laughs> and just shoves the banana peel in its mouth. Yeah, I was eating um, during this scene. And oh I, God! I, I, it totally turned my stomach. Yeah, I was like, oh, I got to take a little little break here. I I, I yeah. straight up looked away when it came to the chicken butt moment. I looked away. I I hate seeing animals get hurt on screen, and that was like. 
three bridges past a bridge too far for me. This scene was rough. Uh, it was probably the most disgusting scene I've seen in any movie, and I've seen a lot of movies. But yeah, that's saying uh, something. This was putrid. Yeah, th- this was a lot. Um, yeah. I could, but, so, I, yeah. My impression was that the people that were doing the butt chewing were part of like some kind of like carnival act or something and they kind of did like a shoot the rodeo thing where they're like oh who do we know that does crazy Mm. shit let's let's just get them we'll hire them for a day we'll shoot them doing their shtick and we'll put it in our movie dude you're probably Mm. right like like the geeks that used to like bite chicken heads off except this guy eats chicken butts (laughs) dude i do this thing with a chicken's butt you would not believe you're hired (laughs) you're in throw a banana in there and you got a deal can you carve open a <laughs> crocodile and pull a woman out of it? <laughs> the auditions for this. That's a whole other movie, honestly. Oh, man. It is it, it is yeah. interesting, like, the gender swapping, whatever we want to call it. Like, in the beginning, when the guy was attacked, he became an old woman. And in this case, they're, like, resurrecting the black magician sorcerer guy, and he becomes a woman. Yeah, that is with, interesting. With, like, talents. Like, they're just pretty free with they're resurrecting huh it's pretty cool i didn't even think about that yeah that is cool huh i didn't even think that it was like the same like bat demon oh man. yeah it's just this it's I own just, entity yeah yeah yeah, yeah you're probably right but yeah. uh, they don't explain it and i get i think it may, you might be right because of what happens towards the end but um we'll get to that i guess <laughs> So they they take all the chewed up food and put it into one big globby mess and put it into the mouth of the the woman and then that's supposed to bring her back to life and and it does in fact r- like b- bring her back. To yeah, life. I mean, who are we to judge? <laughs> it her. works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. We've not hey, been judging. Good, good on them. You do what you gotta do. They knew what to do. Yep, they did it. And it works. All it's right, like, uh, it's like Pet Cemetery. You know, I always oh, give my wife yeah. flowers. Apparently, yeah. she just wants chewed up chicken butt. Yeah, you just got to mama bird some food for her. <laughs> mama bird a chicken butt. Ugh. And a plantain um, peel. Yeah, she'd, she'll love it. Um, all right, from there we cut <laughs> this, to... This Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> mama bird a chicken butt for your loved show ones. Your, show your special ones in your life that you love them. All right, all right, you can carry on. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so from there we cut to uh the second big box and match of the evening between uh chan hung and babo the tie fighter <laughs> the tie <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, oh, it literally I is. The only picture is Star Wars now. I typed those words and it didn't hit me <laughs> until I read it out loud. You got oh it. my god! You got it. Yeah, you on target. Uh, the tie boxer. <laughs> Uh, uh, Chan does a that's X Wing, not the TIE Fighter, but you get it. Yeah, but you get it. The jokes joke lands. Uh. <laughs> it's fine. Um Chan does a pretty good job during the fight, uh, but he is eventually blinded because this freshly uh revitalized zombie woman uh ends up stabbing an effigy of him in the eyes mm. and this this kind of it's basically like a voodoo doll mm-hmm. so uh but chan is uh still able to win the fight and he he kind of just runs immediately to the back room because he knows something ain't right yeah um he can yeah. only I mean, see maggots I, at one point yeah namely his eyes yeah <laughs> namely his eyes aren't right yeah his eyes are jacked up uh but we we quickly learn why though. Well, we know why because she stabbed him in the eyes in a picture. But um, he heads back to Thailand because he knows, uh, so, you know, something's going on. He from the uh, the current abbot, he learns that the other um, like demon magicians um, increased the power of the poison needles um, that had stabbed uh, Ching Zhao earlier, and now both Ching Zhao and Chan are in trouble. Mm-hmm. So the yeah hope you didn't break any vows <laughs> yep uh so the abbot and uh and chan hung go on a journey to some other buddhist site it looks like a pretty uh extensive trip um but they get to this this area that has like a giant buddha head lying on the ground and they extract essence of iron from this mushroom looking thing 
which I think they say only comes around like you can only do this like once every like thousand years or something like that. Um, yeah. But this this essence of iron helps a person become invincible. Well, um, can, they, this, this is another scene where well, uh, this whole movie is filled with sets that are just jaw dropping, like beautiful. Mm-hmm, this mm-hmm. is another one. This it, it's like it it could even be the same sound sound stage that they used for the uh, the rope magic uh, ritual we were talking about earlier. But again, beautiful. Totally beautiful. The big Buddha head on its side is like half sunken into the sand and they have to like cl- crawl down into a crack in its head where I don't know if you guys noticed, but like the, the where the mushroom is, it, where the mushroom is growing inside of the head is like the same place where the third eye would be. Mm, so that was kind mm-hmm. of a nice little attention to detail. It's so fucking cool looking. It gave me um uh, like Tchaikovsky vibes. It reminded me a lot of the um, stalker. It gave me this mm. set of this gave me stalker vibes. The head sunken in the ground. Uh, somebody nice. out there will, huh. will see this movie and yeah, know what I'm talking about. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah like stalker. Looks, Stalker's great. When the uh, the the oil started like secreting out of the shroom, there was like fire shooting out of the eye, which was really cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that set was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was it was gorgeous. A lot like like Dan said, a lot of this movie is actually gorgeous and then you just get 10 minutes of guys puking so well i feel like we're in a what i was getting at the start of this where i I was thinking there would be this formula of like sports movie power-up footage sports movie power-up footage and we're we're like a traditional sports movie would have like the fight scene and then you would go to like learn about the characters and their family and see drama and then also punctuate the drama with them working out and getting ready for the next fight this movie it's like fight footage batshit crazy spiritual ritual murder of animals to get superpowers boxing fight more batshit crazy rituals to get animal driven superpowers like they, they just drop out all of the character drama that could happen in a movie like this and they just plug that hole with alligator skulls that shoot fire and birth bats and I'm here <laughs> for it I'm here for it all day all right. I love it yeah, it's a it's a twist on the sports movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can <laughs> say that. Quite a twist. Quite a twist. A sloppy, sloppy um, twist. <laughs> um, all right, so they, they end up going back to the temple, and um, the abbot has, has Chan, I guess, like, pray to Buddha or communicate with Buddha, but he ends up uh, lying to Buddha, um... Uh, when he says that he hasn't broken at like the rule of uh, abstinence, and uh, because of this, that is a big sin, and uh, Buddha does not enjoy that. He does not enjoy being lied to. So Chan Hung has now lost all his powers, according to the new abbot. Um, that does not sit well with Chan. He gets very angry. Uh, he, I, I think Dan mentioned earlier, like or or Eric, it's like. He didn't think he had to be a monk forever, so like hooking up with his girlfriend was fine. Um, but he he's he's needed he's needing his monk powers now, and now he he they're gone. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry for that. Sorry about um, that. Uh, Chen like, gets very angry. Yeah, yeah. You, you get yours. Yeah. You lost ours. That's the math. Yeah. And he bit, right, he yeah. bitch slaps a dead monk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was a delightful um, turn. When he, this whole movie is like he, a, a fighter committing himself to a religious ideal in order to gain strength. It's like, oh, all right, that's an interesting story. I'd watch this. And then at this scene, it's like the, he gets chastised for having fucked, and he's just like, "Fuck you! I'm gonna have sex with women. What are you gonna do? Like, why is that one of the requirements?" And he just starts bitch slapping monks. It's great. Well, it's just the one dead specific monk. No, he kind of he, he doesn't get in like a full on fight with the the monks in the ritual where he gets caught lying. But he does like shove some of them around. He pushes past a bunch That's of them true. to get into the. Yeah, yeah. He like breaks into their holiest of sanctuaries and just starts screaming at their god. Pretty much. Uh, it's great. Hmm. It's fun. It's a fun yeah. little turn of events. He just takes the fight to a deity. Hmm. I love That's it. true. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he goes to Ching Zhao's corpse, um, hits it. A couple times, then uh, he gets struck by like a yellow light that knocks him backwards, and uh, Ching Zhao uh, starts talking to him. 
Uh, he says that his only hope is to go find the golden ashes in Katmandu, which are uh, the ashes of one of his former bodies. Um, he was like the, the was it the llama of a certain sect? Uh, but we, we are on our way to Katmandu uh, because uh, in, in one of the temples there, the golden ashes are located in Buddha's open hand. And uh, we learn from like the temple guide or like the tour guide that they can only be seen at a specific time. And I believe that's right at dawn. I, um, something just struck me. Uh, does, some of this feels a little bit like an uncharted video game yes it's yeah like, absolutely I have, to, yeah. I have to do this to do this to get through this to get power to do this the, even like the the dark magic stuff uh it just builds it's like you just have continual missions yeah it's that that like uh the the last what was the last star wars movie called the rise of skywalker, the rise of skywalker. it's like it, it, instead of telling a character story we're going to tell a story that's just a long chain of MacGuffins to plot points which in this yeah, movie yeah. i'm i'm here for it because it, oh, yeah, like the no, spectacle this, is brilliant the spectacle yeah, is worth no, it yeah yeah in this case it's it's an awesome wild ride yeah 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 it does feel like you're setting up something to set something up like i mean you know yeah, now that you've put the spaghetti soup into the right order, we realize that it's Pig Latin, and now you have to go to Pig Latin Island to learn how to translate it. <laughs> right. But only yeah. when the sun shines through this specific thing to, <laughs> right. li to light up this yeah. invisible thing. That, yeah. And you'll, you'll vomit a magical pen that writes in invisible ink, and you'll need to go to another island. <laughs> yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it, it makes for an interesting movie. <laughs> And for this one specifically yeah, but, 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 i guess what we're saying is the new yeah. star wars movie was terrible and this movie's pretty fun and they both do the same yeah. thing i had fun with it well, well, it was fine you know, i, I, I was like fine. you greg i like you more than that star yeah. wars movie well that's yeah, fine uh so uh <laughs> moving on i got i got two bullets left we got you All right, we're, we're right at the end. there is there is so much movie left you um, can do it so yeah so we're in Kathmandu. Uh, 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 Chan Hung is at the temple. Uh, they, 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 they say they say it's they say the temple's protected by supernatural powers. That night, uh, Chan cuts open his arm. A pretty like, crazy, <laughs> insane cut. Wait, why did he do it? Um, why did he cut open his arm? Because he's pouring in the essence of iron. It has to mix with your blood. <laughs> <laughs> can, Greg, can you explain what you mean by cut open your arm? Uh, he took a knife and he dug the deepest hole you possibly could in your arm as if you didn't have a bone there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then he ends up just uh, just sewing that bad boy up with some like red thread. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 He, he like cuts so far into his muscle tissue and then just dumps a vial of liquid into it. Did they not have syringes in the 80s? I thought the 80s were kind of all about syringes. If I'm not if I'm not lying, but like there's, there's better ways to do yeah. that, buddy. Yeah, but probably. Um, oh, but man. this is the only way he knows how he, he's not a he's not a master of the uh, syringe arts. So. <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, he's good with a knife and he's good at digging holes. He's the kind of guy that's like the recipe calls for eggs. So I should kill what? Four chickens. <laughs> like, dude, That's overkill. You don't have to do that. Uh, you don't even have to technically kill, kill it to get its butt. It was awesome. Yo, I, I, the arms slicing up in moment. Like my toes are curling thinking about it. Like, Another it was a oh, scene. Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah, it's it looks awesome. great. Yeah, it's it's disgusting. And but then the you can see that. Yeah. yeah the essence becomes like a little little ball of yellow light and it's like traveling inside of his body yeah and it like kind of works its way around it's cool yeah we also learned earlier that um the uh essence of iron can only like it it will come out of you um when you but pee. it's gonna come out through your eyes oh shit <laughs> so when you cry be, yeah just be aware hey guys what, um, what movie do you guys like to watch to cry 
Uh, I like to watch um, Doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me cry every time. Does it really? Is it the end when she's like, I'm, I don't know. I'm so full of doubt. Is it the end? Is that what does it? <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't cry at that. Oh, I do love no, Doubt. I, do. I think Doubt's an amazing movie. I enjoy it. I've actually, uh, I've probably seen that movie like four times. I've seen that movie more than a person should, I think. Isn't that the pedophile priest? Well, movie? question mark. I, is he? Is he? Is it? Is that I, what I haven't it's about? seen it, so I guess not. You should then. watch it. You should watch it. It's great. Eh, I don't really care. You know what? He has long fingernails. He does. Oh, all right. Now, ooh, you, you've got me. <laughs> you got me there. He's a prickly priest. Uh, all right. Let's finish this movie. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> Uh, all right, so now he's all uh, he's all jacked up on essence of iron. Uh, at sunrise, he goes, or I mean, sun up, he goes to the temple. Wait, what's the difference? Uh, oh wait, sun oh, sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's this, done. This, this this yeah, this movie has has broken my brain, uh, and I thought sunrise was when the sun goes down because I'm an idiot. Uh, so at sunrise, the proper time, he does go to the temple. Uh, he tries to get near the statue, but he's fought. Uh, he's fought against by a laser throwing statue. Intruder alert! Intruder <laughs> yeah. alert! Uh, it's pretty it's pretty fun but they don't really go far enough with it uh he makes it trip and like a turtle it can't get back up if it's falling down so it's pretty good. interesting he gives a little bow he's like you're only doing your job i respect you yeah gives a little bow. Oh, yeah. yeah that's nice. nice yeah um so uh chan continues up the statue he gets into the hand he's ready to grab the ashes but the zombie finger knife lady uh enters the fight here um she shoots Zombie hands, very reminiscent of the handcuffs from Highway to Hell. <laughs> oh. um, they, they, she shoots them at him, and they start tearing up his chest pretty good. Um, she summons a, an evil crocodile from the ground. Chan Hung has to fight the crocodile for a while, but he gets away. The hands the, give him give him like a titty twister, like yeah. purple yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, his chest is bleeding and scratched up pretty rough but they definitely aimed for the nipples yeah <laughs> a lot of nipple trauma in this movie yeah this movie's all nipple trauma um, that's what he gets that opening sex scene he does he does some nipple trauma of his own that's tr- <laughs> this scene was a fucking boomerang coming back to his ass yep yep oh boy um all right so he he gets away from the crocodile but the uh, the woman traps him on the ground uh the the zombie hands come up and like hold him down uh i'm pretty sure she teabags him yeah <laughs> at one point <laughs> she squeezes and, his uh, head between her knees and then just starts squatting over him over and over again and like cackling yeah yeah Farting. so yeah <laughs> 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 i hope so <laughs> that's it uh and then that, then that she was the audio pouring... of the movie that eric just cut in he's editing this episode and he just cut in that audio <laughs> legit audio it sounded, yeah we I, we couldn't hear it but it was great i'm sure yeah. you loved it yeah you'll hear it <laughs> um so after teabagging him she pours uh, a bunch of hairy caterpillars <laughs> all over him <laughs> uh, doesn't she vomit it oh listen i don't know there's so much going on in the scene <laughs> all right that's also fair. also cute creatures these fuzzy yeah, little caterpillars yeah, yeah. Yeah, we get we got another couple cute creatures coming up too. Um, Although they they kind of ra- wrath a con his ass, start crawling in his ear and his nose and his nose. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so the hairy worms are getting the best of him. They're crawling in its orifices, every single hole that he's got. I'm sure because these worms don't care. They show or they do them care, all, and they want him to 10. enjoy. <laughs> you get. <it? laughs> um, But at the last minute, uh, the light comes into the temple correctly, illuminates the golden ashes, and an old monk appears, or it's a young monk in a fake beard. (laughs) Um, From there, his flying chair comes down from the statue. (laughs) It's not a celestial throne. It's a flying chair. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, maybe. Hey, listen, you... 
you think of it how you want, and I think of it as a <laughs> flying chair. Um, and he electrocutes the evil uh, zombie woman until her skin comes off, oh. and she she falls backwards, and she's like, you can see all her veins, and she's just blue on the inside, and she starts melting from her butt <laughs> and pour, <laughs> pouring just blue liquid out all over the place. When he, I love that. Oh, it was awesome. When he rips her skin off, <laughs> she's just, her body is just all veins and like vessels. Yeah. It's all blue and purple. It reminded me of, um, you guys remember Slim Good that? Body? Slim Good Body, yeah. Slim Good yeah. Body, yeah. Yeah, totally. No, yeah, what's Slim Good Body? Him. He's like a. Look it up. Yeah, he's like a guy that would wear a unitard that was like painted with like tissues and organs and like the whole system uh and he would be yeah, on a like, teach anatomy i guess it was in the 70s i think he was on like captain kangaroo or something i don't know if he was on anything else but and yeah, his name was, was slim anatomy. good body yeah check it out do a google search yeah, yeah I'm, gonna, I'm sending it to you in uh this i mean it's so funny that you say check it out because that does sound like a steve brule joke check it out <laughs> check it out okay no uh, i've never seen this person before this is new to me. Yeah, he's it's great. Very similar to that, except it was like a full body. I, I don't know. The, yeah. the image that you just sent me is is of a grown man wearing uh, an organ <laughs> unitard standing next to an old man puppet. And I can only see one of the puppet's hands here. And the man is smiling in a way that I don't want to know where the other puppet's <sighs> hand is. Yeah, that's that's kind of a hard horror movie in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, Slim Good Body. Yeah, Slim maybe Good Body. Ready to get the rights to that and do it, do it up separate movie yeah what if it turns so, out the suit melts into his flesh and then his organs become made out of felt well i would i would watch that i like it yeah i'd watch that all right so so you think you think this movie's not going to get weirder and it it you're wrong uh because <laughs> after after a skinned woman starts pouring blue liquid out of her butt um she does end up dying uh but and kind of melting away but she gives birth i think mm-hmm now you're gonna have to help me here. She gives birth to what I thought was three clones of the original like de- bat demon guy I, oh, from earlier. Okay, I like that. I'm on board or, with that. Or is or is it the three other like acolytes? I couldn't tell because uh, they're all covered in goop. <laughs> yeah, I don't. There's a lot of threes in this. Things being born, rebirthing things. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm with your your first read. I like the idea of it's like he's about to destroy this evil and it's like their last go and so he like birds their escape pods to try to get to him i kind of like that i, I didn't read it that right. way but on on hearing you read it that way with your deep sultry tones i can't say no <laughs> I, I can't say no all right well, i'm glad it works for you because one of them cuts his stomach open immediately with a sword is oozing white goo the other two come over with swords as well or knives and cut their like hands Mm -hmm. Uh, like basically it looks like they just cut their fingers completely off and they start bleeding into the wound then from that wound they're doing this to each other they're doing this to each other yeah 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 it's all just the clones this is the description um, i've been waiting for i can't wait yeah well we'll see uh because then out of the wounds comes uh three weird one-eyed little monsters um that they i when they first came out i was like oh it's like a chicken but it just has an eye instead of a head, but it, I, I don't know how to describe. I, I, I wrote down Cyclops peacock mini dinosaurs. Whoa! I wrote Cyclops <laughs> brain chicken dinosaurs. Oh, cl- <laughs> nice! All right. How did you both? I mean, I I can and see the sh- dinosaurs, but it didn't, didn't click for me. They shoot lasers out of their eyes as well. So. They do. They do indeed shoot lasers out of their eyes. We're eye. um. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, th- there's three eyes. Oh, there, there. you go. Okay. Um, I feel like they, they look like if you were at a dollar store and like next to the like generic American man action figure, there was like chicken creature. <laughs> this would this would be in the shrink wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, very yeah, so they, not threatening. I, yeah, though. adorable. They're, they're, like, they're kind of fuzzy. Look like a little something yeah, you have like on your bed at night to you cuddle up to. Th- they're cute as hell. They, they look like a, a bad DIY project for dressing up like leftover turkey gizzards. <laughs> they, look, they look like something a child would make out of materials they shouldn't have access to. Pipe pipe cleaners and dead, and, <laughs> dead, dead, and a dead animals. Yeah, pipe cleaners and a liver. 
uh, yeah. So, so they they do shoot lasers uh, into the Buddha statue's eyes. The old monk that is coming to the rescue is hurt. Uh, like you see him in pain. The temple starts falling apart. Uh, the monk though uh, brings some of his own statues to life. Uh, that that end up they shoot a couple bombs <laughs> at the little <laughs> adorable monsters, yeah. and then they they kill all the little one eyed dinosaur monk baby things mm-hmm. um oh uh then from there we cut back to chan uh who is um who's back at the temple and the uh the essence of iron starts coming out of his, his eyes in like metallic needles mm. um that he pulls out but you know after they come out he seems to be in pain but uh, he can see again after they come out, but he's uh, he's back at the temple in Thailand in front of uh, Ching Zhao's body. Uh, all the monks come in uh, to, to pray towards the body, and Chan just walks out. Also, he's just in normal clothes. He's not in his monk clothes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then from there we, we ass is what he's going to yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after that fight. Um, yeah, from there uh, we, we just cut to credits. Because he he is defeated, I assume the evil, and now uh, Ching Zhao can reach immortality in death. I don't know how Buddhism works, so that is quite possible, uh, quite possibly how it works. But I have no idea. Yay! And I'm not I'm not gonna, I'm not even going to Google it. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I mean, if if you all were confused by hearing this plot synopsis, imagine how confused we were watching the fucking movie. <laughs> Hey, it's it's a lot to take in. Thank thank you, Greg. This, this uh, is well, a lot. we did our best. Yeah, thanks for getting those details. Uh, it it is definitely it's it's a visual movie. Yes. Um, my my biggest takeaway uh, was that like broadly speaking, it's about like bad people are bad, and there's this good power, and will you harness the good power to defeat evil? I think even towards the end when they have that big boss fight, they talk about like you're going to face evil. You are going to defeat evil today. Like they they put it in those kinds of terms. So, yeah, my biggest takeaway is it seemed like it was kind of about like uh, evil things use bizarreness and like unfamiliarity and weird imagery to startle you. But every time like a weird chicken brain cyclops came crawling out of a, a dying woman's butthole to shoot lasers into a statue's eyes, like the solution to that problem was always like, oh, say this prayer we've been saying for a thousand years and bombs will appear and blow them up. Mm. It's like, oh, well, tradition and and like respectable, like the the way things have been, that that is the way we will get over these things, even though we don't know what they are, that like the old solutions still work. Nice. Seem, seem to be the message. Do you think Chan become became that old monk? I was wondering that, too. Did he summon? He was, he, he, did he like summon something out of the Buddha statue to help him or did he transform Maybe he summoned the power of the old monk and he like temporarily turned into him. That's uh, that's what I think because he wasn't there anymore. Like he was not in the fight. I think. Yeah, he disappeared. I think From it was there, yeah. him with a Santa beard on. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why he looks <laughs> like maybe like like I said, it, I was like, oh, I think it was just a young guy like just in a in a fake beard. But yeah, could have just been uh Chan Hung. Yeah, yeah like that he, makes, ha- he harnessed the power temporarily. They are, he, he he is his like twin in another life, right? So they are like metaphysically connected somehow. That is in the true. Lore, yeah. So th- that would track. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Maybe, maybe we all have a little bit of Buddha inside of us. I got a Buddha bill. <laughs> <laughs> Little tiny men inside uh, of us. All right. We got little tiny, little, little tiny men inside well, of our bellies that need to be vomited if up. If I want to find out if there's a little boot inside this movie, there's only one way I can find out. That's by stabbing it to death. So what do Let's you guys say we it. stab this movie to death? Let's do it. Time for the ratings. All right, here on Stabby Stabby, we uh, rate our movies that we've just uh, deep dived into, and uh, we rate them by stabbing them to death. So uh, stabbing is affectionate for us. So 
Um, we rated, uh, what do we do? Five stabs? I should probably know now. What do we have? <laughs> it goes up to 10. Or something like that. I think oh, it goes up to 10. 10. Yeah, all the way up to oh. 10. Yeah. Oh, should we adjust all five. your previous ratings? Yeah. <laughs> when you gave something 8 high. out of 10, were you actually doing 8 out of 5? <laughs> <laughs> well, last episode I said we did stars. So at least I'm good. At least I'm in, like, in the right like realm here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we st- stab out of 10. Um, let's start with. Greg, well, how would you rate Boxer's Omen? Um, I don't think you can rate Boxer's Omen. Uh, this movie <laughs> is a thing unto itself. Uh, but push comes to stab. I'm going to stab this movie. I'm going to stab this movie nine times. Wow. This movie awesome. is insanely fun. There's very little plot that you need to care about. There is... <laughs> not a ton of nudity but pretty good nudity in it and um the special effects are both disgusting and adorable (laughs) so um i i i I liked all the characters um there's not that many uh so so they they definitely are i don't yeah i don't know i i really enjoyed this movie i've wanted to see it for a while um so i'm glad we brought it to the show because i maybe just wouldn't have had like the drive to watch it um otherwise but man it is incredibly fun and i i I would love to watch this in like a theater Mm. or with with at least at least a group of people instead of just myself in the dark um (laughs) turn on a light greg (laughs) no i can't (laughs) my the light the one light bulb i have is upstairs um yeah so nine nine stabs out of ten for me um, super love it. Uh, how about you, Dan? How many stabs are you giving this? I'm gonna I'm gonna give this. I was torn between six and seven after talking about it with you guys. I'm gonna give it a seven. Seven stabs for me. Um, all the things that Greg just said. I also really want to see this in a crowded theater, like a like a midnight screen. This is begging for a midnight screaming someplace. Like, please show this movie at some at some time. I would I would buy that ticket. Um, yeah, I mean, like, like we, you just heard the whole description. The, all of the ritual scenes are fucking crazy and awesome and fun to look at. And anytime they weren't either in a boxing ring or performing crazy rituals, I wanted to claw my own eyes out. Except for the sex scenes. Sex scenes were good. Um, so, yeah, get it, watch it. Watch it. Uh, like, I, I mean what I said earlier, where I feel like other kung fu movies or sports movies, because I feel like they tend to follow similar formulas where they would have character drama like the father of the daughter that he's in love with that he's not allowed to marry you know gets sick and maybe he can you know what i'm talking about that kind of like bullshit drama they just throw all that out and are like watch this man chew an asshole and then spit it into the guy next to him's mouth like i'm here for it i loved it it was super fun i would watch it again um uh, not, and not to say I, I mentioned that shock thing just because it, it is shocking and it's the thing that I've been thinking about the most since I watched it but also all the sets are beautiful all the special effects are ahead of their time the lighting is really incredible like everything is really glowing and like bright vibrant colors and yeah I just I didn't know what was coming next and that was a fun feeling so it, it's going to get a 7 from me Eric sharpen that knife I want to hear how many times you'd stab it yeah I, I so I wrote down an 8 uh, love the movie. I could, I could, yeah, seventy nine. Yeah, I could easily probably pop to a nine, but I'll, I'll stick with what I wrote down. So I did write down an eight. Uh, I did think there was some parts that were a drug a little bit, like when they were like showing the scenery of like the next uh, setup that they were going to. But other than that, it was awesome. It was really wild. I love the uh, constantly changing imagery. It felt like it just kept ramping up. In intensity, you know, it just kept getting more and more <laughs> insane. And where I was like, I, I don't know where this is going to go. Like, how can it get any crazier? And it managed to um, floating severed heads, uh, lasers, and maggots, and squishy, gloppy stuff. Uh, so, yeah, Shaw Brothers don't mess around. It, it was pretty fun. All right. Well, I guess that was our take on the Boxer's Omen. If you've listened to this long, thank you so much. And could we just impose on you a little bit and say, one, if you know anybody that likes podcasts like this, you know, why don't you just go ahead and send them, send them this little podcast? Maybe not this, but send them a good episode. <laughs> send your friends the best episode <laughs> of this podcast and, uh, you know, share that around. Um, if you want to leave us a review, like Greg said, leave us a five star review, all five stars, please. And whatever uh, uh, podcasting app you're using, that really does help us out. Um Greg, how can we learn more about what movies we're going to be watching in the future? 
uh just hop on over bring bring your um chicken chicken butt over to instagram and follow us at stabby pod <laughs> where we will uh announce every wednesday the next movie we're going to be watching so uh and, and our new episodes come out every monday uh where we pick a new weirdo movie and get weird with it yeah. so um mm-hmm. that is what we do but yeah instagram is your best uh place for us and also probably your worst place for your own mental health and well-being for everything else in the world <laughs> so yeah why, why would you can keep follow us there so you can know what we're gonna watch so we don't just spoil it for you you can watch along with us that's always more fun uh, otherwise yep. I, I think that's it is there anything left are we all wrapped up I think we're wrapped up yeah. i think we're good right. hey eric what do we like to say at the end of every episode on stabby stabby don't forget to stab your friends with giant essence of iron knitting needles <laughs> in the sides of their neck so their neck separates and becomes a floating <laughs> head with tentacles. Yeah, it's weird that we said that for so long. <laughs> <laughs> and it finally happened. Uh, yeah, don't forget to stab your friends. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.